nuchal cords, let's chat about it. A loop of cord around the fetal neck at the time of delivery is not an uncommon finding. And in most cases, it's not associated with any adverse fetal or neonatal events. In case reports and small case series, tight nuchal cords have been associated with adverse outcomes, including fetal asphyxia, fetal demise, and long-term neurodevelopmental outcomes. Nuchal cords can be classified as single or multiple, loose or tight around the fetal neck, and they can be classified as type A or type B, where type A is where the placental end of the umbilical cord crosses over the umbilical end of the umbilical cord in an unlocked pattern, or type B, where the placental end crosses under the umbilical end of the umbilical cord in a locked pattern. At birth, the incidence of nuchal cords ranges from 19 to 24%. Like and follow for part two of nuchal cords. This is part two of my series on nuchal cords. Please go watch part one first. Single nuchal cords are much more common than multiple nuchal cords. In a meta-analysis of over 270,000 births, the incidence of single nuchal cord was 16%, double 3%, triple 1%, and quadruple less than 1%. Fetal ultrasound can show whether or not there's a nuchal cord, but it cannot show you how tight the nuchal cord is. This is an ultrasound picture of the back of the fetal neck where you can see loops of cord. And then if you put color on that, you can also see in the same area that there is definitely umbilical cord there. And this is another ultrasound image if you were looking at the fetal neck this way. Screening for the presence of nuchal cord on ultrasound is not recommended because there is no high or even moderate quality evidence showing that diagnosing these nuchal cords prenatally on ultrasound improves pregnancy outcomes. Like and follow for part three of my nuchal cord series. This is part three of my three-part series on nuchal cords. Please go back and watch parts one and two. Over the course of a pregnancy, nuchal cords may come and go, resolve, and then reform. Type A nuchal cords are more likely to resolve, whereas type B nuchal cords are more likely to persist or form into what we call a true knot in the cord. The risk of stillbirth in fetuses with uh, nuchal cords may depend on the number of loops present, with multiple loops increasing the risk of stillbirth rather than a single loop. The risk of stillbirth is also increased if there is a true knot present. And this is an example of a true knot in, a, in an umbilical cord. It's important to know that in the case of a stillbirth, the presence of a true knot or nuchal cord alone is not enough evidence to show that that was the cause of the stillbirth. Other pathological findings must also be present, and here is a list.